Welcome everyone back to the channel, Kyle here. And today, it's Saturday, and we know what that means. That means weekly purchases. Our time of the week where we see what came through the door from the mailman, the UPS guy, the DHL guy, the Amazon driver. What did I find in stores? What did my grandma pick up for me this week? Um, no, I wish. Grandma didn't get me anything this week, but it'd be nice. Grandma, I know you're watching. Hopefully. No, she's not watching. But anyways, uh, this is where we sit down. We talk about what we got for the week. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you got for the week. Um, I can tell you this week, I promised it the last couple of weeks that I had some heavy, heavy hitters coming, and that was absolutely no lie. This is a heavy hitter week. This could be the biggest week of all time. Uh, and, you know, I'll probably save the best for last. I think that's what everyone wants. Uh, save the best for last, I will. But there's a lot of good stuff, a lot of things on my uh, want list. Um, just a really great week. If you've been following me on social media, at SirPaul64 on Twitter, at the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram, you might have seen a couple of these weekly purchases come through. Uh, Amazon and I, uh, after fighting for a while, it was kind of nice what they did. They gave me a, a Joe a day, it felt like. So we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But a lot of good stuff in weekly purchases. A lot of stuff I'm excited to add to my collection. But, you know, before we get to weekly purchases, we kind of talk about uh, some of the things that happened over the week, some of the new items that were uh, shown pictures for, um, and this week will be no different. So let's just jump right into that. First off, hopefully you guys took time to watch my video on Thursday, just a couple days ago. Uh, I think that showed that, hey, it's not all uh, roses in the fig hunting game. Sometimes you go on wild goose chases. Sometimes you get bamboozled. And I think that's exactly what happened to me uh, on Thursday. You know, I took a five-hour road trip. Watch the video. You'll see the great LJN adventure. Um, but anyways, the big announcement for those of you that didn't watch that video, which, like I said, strongly recommend. I think it's a good video. You can see my heart break on camera, basically. Um, but I'm back. I'm in the LGN game. I've threatened it for a while. We've talked about it. I had them all as a kid. I was just missing a handful as a kid. I shouldn't say I had them all. Just missing a handful. They were all the mintiest of mint. But I sold them all in 99, 2000, somewhere in there. Uh, one of the biggest regrets of my life. And I said, it's time for me to wrong that, or wrong that, right that wrong. Uh, I'm going to get that fixed. So I am going to be all in on LJNs. Just be prepared in these weekly purchases videos. There's going to be some LJNs and I'm going forward. Uh, you know, we know some of them are very pricey. Some of them are middle of the road. Uh, it's probably the worst time ever to jump into the LJN hobby as prices across the board for wrestling figures are through the roof. But you know what? It's time. It's time for me. It's a glaring omission in my collection. I have a, a pretty good collection, that's for sure. Uh, but LJNs are missing, and I played with them so much as a kid. It's really ridiculous I don't have them. Um, so it is. It's the, it's the new quest. Believe you me, I have not given up my Jax quest. We talk about it. We love the Lucy portion of the show every week. That will continue. But as you guys can imagine, I mean, there's a lot of figures in the Jax Ruthless Aggression line. I don't have all of them yet, but I'm getting closer and closer. You'll see this week. I'm getting closer to finishing that off. Uh, some of the ones I'm missing are some heavy hitters that are hard to get or really expensive. Or I'm missing ones that really aren't worth a lot, but just don't pop up much. Um, so I'm going to keep working on that. It don't I'll just be checking, doing my usual hunts and that, but... You're, the days of getting 70 Lucy's are pretty much over. Uh, there's not that many I need. Uh, that's just not going to happen. I'm not going to get that lucky. Um, but this will be a new search, uh, the LJN. It's going to be a tough one. Um, for those of you, hopefully, that know a little bit about LJNs, um, they're not easy to come by, uh, especially this day and age. And they're not easy to come by in good shape that I want. So it should be an adventure for weeks to come, months to come, who knows, maybe years to come before I can finish this set. The nice thing about it, you're looking at 70-some figures, give or take, uh, depending where you count your variants and everything else. Um, you guys know me by now, I think, that I'm an absolute maniac. And I say I'm not going to get it. Well, I will. Corporal K uh, Kirshner, for example, got a beard, got no beard, got stubble. I think I only need one. But I know as I get into it, I'm going to need all three. It's just the way it goes with me. Um, so a lot to come with the LJNs. I hope you guys will be a fan of uh, some LJN discussion here in the future. But... Much more to come on that. But what else happened this week? Well, that LJN disaster wasn't the only thing that bad happened this week. Uh, they announced, I believe it was Tuesday of uh, this week, uh, whatever day that was. I don't even know. Um, they announced uh, this new network app, N-E-T-W-R-K app. You had to download it. And they were getting an exclusive G.I. Joe Classified Series Cobra Commander. 
Um, and then Thursday night at 7 o'clock, it was going live, and you could buy it off this app. So I was all excited. Uh, hopefully you guys saw this week, uh, Hasbro also announced a Cobra Commander in the G.I. Joe Classified line. Uh, awesome, awesome figure. Not quite cartoon, but a little bit there. Almost reminds me of the uh, later years of the cartoon. Um, I, I don't know. I, Verdict's still out on that, like a lot of these, till I see him in person or see more in-hand images. But pretty cool. I hope there's some uh, more Cobra Commanders to come outside of this one. But uh, they were going to have a variant of the blue, as the Hasbro one was supposed to be the dark blue. This was going to be this, for somehow this website got a, a variant. I thought it was fishy from the get-go. It just seemed really strange to me. But whatever. I mean, things like this happen all the time. So, long story short, 7 o'clock on Thursday night, I'm all in on that app. I'm there. I'm trying to get in. I put all my uh, address, my payment uh, stuff in a couple days earlier. Well, I get in there, I can't get it in. It's locked, the app's locked. It's fatal error all over again. The major uh, figure pod figures from, uh, I don't know, six months ago or whatever it was. Um, I was just having flashbacks of that. I couldn't get in. I'd restart the app. I'd restart my phone, try everything I could. After about 25 minutes of trying that, it showed sold out. It's like, you've got to be kidding me. I was so mad. Um, you can imagine I'm throwing a fit about it because now my G.I. Joe set's not complete. Here's one, the first exclusive that's missed. And it's going to be a fortune on eBay. It's just going to be nothing but headaches. Well, we were all bamboozled once again. That's going to be the new thing. How many times are we going to get bamboozled during a week? Well, they that network app, after everybody bought them and everything else, they come out with an announcement or a disclaimer or whatever that they're releasing the regular version that's going to be in stores. That was what the pre-order for. It wasn't for this blue variant. Holy cow, what a misstep on them. I immediately deleted that app. I think the most collectors, most hardcore G.I. Joe fans are probably done with that app. We're all done. I feel bad now for the people that did get it because they got a just a regular G.I. Joe that they'll be able to get anywhere else. Um, now they're stuck with these. Some of the guys, you know, I couldn't get one, but some, there was one guy uh, posted that he got 11 uh, just because it messed up and it just gave him all of them. So. Holy cow, talk about hot garbage of the week. That app was the hot garbage of the week. I'm so glad uh, for once it didn't work out in my favor, I guess, even though I sweated it out there for about a half hour. But uh, a very, very interesting deal. But it's cool. The, at the end of the story, we're getting Cobra Commander finally. We knew we would. I had to. If you had to bet, um, he would be my first guest for Series 2. You can't really not have Cobra Commander in a G.I. Joe line. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so Cobra Commander is coming. Um, and we'll see where that variant ends up. That could be a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Uh, well, we should know, I'm, I'm pretty sure, fairly soon. So the G.I. Joe train rolls on. I'm very excited about that. As you guys know, my love for G.I. Joe. So that is coming. And then on Friday, we got an announcement from Mattel, uh, Wrestling Figure Talk. Their San Diego Comic-Con exclusive is going to go up on Entertainment Earth Monday morning. Uh, if you guys remember back uh, last year, it was the Macho Man Slim Jim was the figure. They showed this logo as kind of a hint. Uh, what could it be? Um, you know, that's the old Coliseum logo that was on the VHS tapes and stuff. So I think we're feeling that it's going to be a classic guy. They also gave the hint this is a first time in the line, never been released before. So my money, I'm putting it down, marking it down here on Saturday. We'll see next week uh, in this video. We'll talk about it. But I have a feeling it is Mr. T. So hear me out. We all know Mr. T was in WrestleMania 1. He's never had an elite. So he's been wrestling, hasn't had an elite. But then also, if uh, some of you guys have seen, he has a Funko coming out. Um, so I think there's some licensing deals signed with Mr. T as of late. I think this rolls right into it, and it fits kind of the San Diego Comic-Con gimmick exclusive type thing. Um, I think if it's something not like that, it's got to be something special for this release. It's got to be something special that you wouldn't probably sell a ton of. At retail, maybe, but you know that Macho Man Slim Jim would have sold a ton of it retail. So I kind of contradict myself there a little bit. But um, in previous years, they've had like Isaac Yankum and the Shockmaster, kind of some one-off guys. But I just have this feeling we're gonna get Mr. T. Other thoughts to me went: we got that new Elizabeth coming out. Maybe a Mega Powers two-pack would be possible in that line. But that doesn't seem right either, because I think that Ultimate Edition Hogan at the end of the year will be the first time Hogan gets in the line. Or maybe they'll surprise us and they'll throw a Mr. Fuji or a Captain Lou or something. But my gut tells me Mr. T, and next week uh, we'll talk about it a little more and see where that ends up. Um, so cool times ahead. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of these San Diego Comic-Cons as uh, figures that were going to be at the show are going to be showing up online. 
good and bad. I mean, I talked about that Cobra Commander thing just a little bit ago. We'll probably have a lot of that to come, unfortunately. Uh, there'll be a lot of exclusives from NECA and Hasbro and Mattel and you name it. All the way down the list, Super 7. Can we get them all? Will we uh, be able to get them all? I don't know. That's where you grab your friends, have your friends try to find them for you too, and, and help each other out. It's one community, and so there it is. So uh, a lot to come with that. Uh, this week, we also saw new battle pack images. I know a lot of people are hot and cold on the basics, myself included. I've got a lot of basics lately, which is kind of strange, but it is what it is. I buy some. I'm not a basic completist. That's crazy, but I do like some off ones. And then out of the three that were shown, I do kind of like that Shane McMahon. It's not an elite figure, but it's something different. You know, you see Romans and Beckys and Seths all the time, but the Shane McMahon is the type of figure I like. Kind of the one-off, just a, a basically a repaint from some of the other ones we've seen before. Um, but I will be picking that one up probably when I see it in the store. I'd love to play the long game and get it on clearance, but as you guys know, I rarely do that. Uh, it's one of my character faults. I'm going to go start seeing a psychiatrist and probably start working on that, see the money I would save if I would play the long game. But uh, there's that um, for battle packs. And then NECA had a surprise figure everybody was excited for. Uh, Thursday night they were going to release a new figure image. Well, what was released? Richard Simmons. Just what every collector like myself is looking for. I mean, Richard Simmons, uh, for you kids of the 80s, um, you know Richard Simmons. I don't know if uh, teenagers and anything else really knows Richard Simmons anymore. But uh, I always loved him on David Letterman and Howard Stern back in the day where it They'd make fun of him, and it was always uh, kind of a pretty cool show. But I don't know about that figure. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Golden Girls when those came out. Kind of in that line, and that kind of landscape, I think there is some a niche market for some of that stuff. But we were kind of hoping, I think a lot of those NECA people were hoping for a cooler uh, idea. But NECA did release and said starting next week. So what is that, the week of the 20th, let's say it is? Uh, the two-pack is supposed to start hitting uh, Walmart. The Raphael in Disguise and the Casey Jones two-pack, that is supposed to start showing up on Walmart shelves. So fingers crossed I can knock that one out quick. Um, that's one of my most uh, coveted uh, figures, I would say, for the Turtles line, especially the movie line is Casey Jones. Uh, we all loved Casey Jones back in the day and still love Casey Jones. So I'm very excited uh, to get that pack. I just hopefully I can knock that off quick and be done with it. Because uh, I do expect that one to be very hard to get. So that's kind of the NECA news this week. But that's enough uh, gabbing around and talking and rambling. It's time to get into the weekly purchases. All right, here we are, weekly purchases. Like I said, we got some crazy stuff this week. It was a big, big week. My super, super uh, package came through finally. You know, last week it was delayed in the mail. It was a whole fiasco. Um... Actually, I was very lucky because I went to the post office and said, hey, it was supposed to be delivered yesterday. What happened? They took my number and then uh, the lady actually called me back and they stopped it from uh, going back to Florida where it came from. And the mail's been goofy. I'm sure it's been goofy for a lot of you guys, but you know, it doesn't hurt to go to your post office. I found that out because she said if she wouldn't have went back there, it was headed back to Florida. And I probably wouldn't even have had them for this week. So, oh boy, if those would have been lost in the mail, it would have been ugly, but... Anyways, let's get started, and I am excited and very happy to announce that we had Scarlet last week. This week, our main man, Roadblock, came through the mail, Amazon coming through, and believe it or not, this figure came in a bubble mailer and is absolutely mint condition. Usually, you get a figure like this in a bubble mailer, it's squished, it's damaged, it's beat up. Not this time. So this is the lucky Roadblock figure. I don't know. I should have got a lottery ticket because that doesn't happen from Amazon very often. But Amazon bringing Roadblock through the door. And then what did I get? Snake Eyes. You know, we got the big deluxe Snake Eyes a couple months ago. Now we got the official Snake Eyes. And finally, what came through? My boy Duke. You know, Duke was a really a favorite of mine. I actually like Duke over Snake Eyes. And this Duke, I think, looks really cool. A lot of people didn't like this one based on first impressions. This is the one I like the most on first impressions. So I'm very happy to add these three along with Scarlet, as you guys know. Uh, I'm just missing Destro. Destro never went up for Amazon pre-order, or at least I missed it. I've never been able to find it for the 1999. Uh, so I got it coming from, I think, Megalopolis. I ordered that from on a deal. Um, so I got that coming. I believe that's going to ship hopefully soon. Actually, I think I got it from Big Bad Toy Store. So I don't think they've got them in yet to ship. But 
Got four of the five. It's about time to do an unboxing. I think I might do an unboxing video this week. We'll see. Uh, of just the G.I. Joe set. Maybe do Destro separately. But I'm so excited to open those. I got to get that done soon. How about the first fire item for wrestling figures this week? Here's a hard to get one that was on my top ten list. It came through. I basically got this for free with my big purchases. I did some bundling, did some negotiations. This uh, was in the list with my big purchase and got this worked into the deal. And I, I've justified it to myself that I've got this figure for free. So you guys know how much this is worth. You've probably seen it out there on eBay and stuff. Uh, you know, the Iconverse Legend 2 pack, Hogan Michaels. One of these figures or one of these packs back in the day I passed on. I said, oh, this isn't really classic superstars, but you can see right here, there's the logo. And, but I was in denial to myself. I didn't count it because the packaging wasn't quite the same, but it has the logo. Now, as I'm older, I say I should have this. I also need it to complete my uh, Ruthless Aggression series. So there it is. Very happy to get that off the uh, to-do list as that was one of the hard ones. Speaking of hard ones, here's one of the hardest two packs to get in Jack's Ruthless Aggression. Jeff Hardy and Umaga. This, I'm not going to lie to you, this does absolutely nothing for me, this two-pack. This feels like it should have been just a normal adrenaline two-pack, but somehow they made it an exclusive. Very hard to get. It's one of those things that it's pro it's just not plentiful. You just don't see it. But I don't think a lot of people are clam clamoring for it. But, you know, people always want $500 for it or whatever, which is just ridiculous. Nobody wants it that bad. This $100 tops is what it should be. I got a pretty good deal on it, uh, worked back and forth with some offers with a seller. Just happy to have this off my list because this is not an exciting two-pack. This isn't one that goes down in everybody's memory. Most of you guys that have seen this probably forgot it even existed, but it is off the list. Um, we're getting closer and closer to that complete Jack's Ruthless Aggression set. Every single day we're getting closer. How about a book? Yeah, I read. We Every once in a while I get a book in the mail. Don't shoot me. I read. How about this one? The Marvel Encyclopedia. So this trails back to that Avengers unboxing I had oh, a month ago or so in Mach 1. I didn't know who he was, and that kind of irked me. There's no file card on the back to get the history of Mach 1. Obviously, from this book, I'm not going to be the Mach 1 expert, but it's the Marvel Encyclopedia where they go, you know, A, B, C, talk about every character, every major storyline, give a little almost file card-esque blurb. Um... I think it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. I said, you know what? I owe it to myself. Uh, I collected comics. I read comics from the time I was maybe six, seven years old till I was probably 16, maybe something like that. Um, so I got a lot of comic knowledge and history. And obviously I see all the movies and everything else and a lot of the cartoons, but I wanted to be a little deeper ingrained. And if a character came up, I could, you know, funnel to this and say, hey, okay, I'll look it up in the book. So I did that. You know, it never hurts to uh, better yourself and get more understanding. Um, so I picked that up this week uh, at a decent price. How about we get into a little bit of basics? I feel like I'm a basic guy as of late. I've got a lot of basics where I normally don't. I get kind of one-off basics and basics that serve a purpose. So Alistair Black got this week. Now, I have both of his elites. They're far superior to this. But uh, I bought a lot of aftermarket t-shirts for wrestlers. And I actually got an Aleister Black um, t-shirt. So I'm going to put it on the basic. That's what I do a lot with the uh, basics. I try to dress them up. Almost turn a basic into an elite. Um, and that's what I'll do with this Aleister Black. Uh, speaking of basics, here's another one. Shinsuke Nakamura. We talked last week, I believe I did. I, I was looking at this, eyeballing this. I said, do I want the black one or the blue one? The blue one being the chase. I saw it and I, right after that video, and I said, you know what, I'll buy it. It's 10 bucks, whatever. I, I might even pick the blue one up if I come across it, but I'm not paying any crazy aftermarket prices for a, a basic figure. But I figure I'll buy this black one. I don't know. Just, just needed to happen. How about another one? If you guys saw my uh, fig hunting video on Friday, every Friday I do a video of kind of recapping my quick fig hunts for the week. Um, you know, I don't talk real loud and get too animated in the aisles. I don't want to seem like a crazy person talking. Uh, it's kind of weird. I, I give props to you fig hunter video people out there that sit there and have just normal conversations to their phone and, you know, meander around the aisles. That's not for me. You know, my time is uh, important to me, I guess. I don't know if that's the right saying, but uh, I'm a very busy guy. I got a lot of stuff going on. So I try to get in and out of stores as fast as I can. I'm not just going to look through, you know, Hot Wheels or something like that for the heck of it. I'm going to look for what I'm looking for 
And I figure, hey, I'll document it and throw it in there, just quick 30 seconds per store or whatever. I mean, I hit a lot of stores during the week. Um, and I'm not really traveling for work right now. Once I start traveling again, the world opens back up. You know, there's going to be times where I'm hitting 10 stores at night as I'm staying in a hotel. What else am I going to do? I'm going to get a pizza and I'm going to do some figure hunting in the, in the uh, area I'm in. So Minneapolis, Kansas City, you know, Chicago, Quad Cities. Um, Omaha, Nebraska, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'll be coming to your town soon. Hook, hit, hit me up. Say, hey, these are the spots you got to go to. Maybe there's some sleeper toy stores out there. Obviously, I know about the Targets and Walmarts, but you'll be seeing a lot of figure hunting videos. But anyways, sorry I got on a rant. Uh, Coralville Walmart on the uh, dreaded LJN figure hunt this week. I did come across this, and I said, you know what? I'm picking this up. So there it is, the Ash Toonie Terrors. I really like this line. My youngest five-year-old daughter really likes this line, so we bought a lot of those. I've kind of inherited them if she's gotten sick of them. Um, so I've got a little display of these. And Ash, uh, Evil Dead, one of my favorites, had to pick that up. Um, I'll probably get the Nun and uh, Nosferatu. I'll play the long game on those. Those go on clearance. There's places that have deals, and I'll use coupons and stuff. I just don't like to spend a lot of money on those if I don't have to. Um, so there's that. But boy, if they ever release a House of a Thousand Corpses or Devil's Rejects in that line... I'll be a day one buyer. Devil's Rejects is my all-time favorite movie, for those of you that don't know. Um, here's one. Talked about this very early, about, what, two months ago, nine weeks ago, right when I started this channel. My love for the Off the Ropes Jack sets. Um, I don't really love them. They're just so quirky and so uh, low deco, or deco, uh, just kind of an embarrassment a little bit. Sold a lot of Rite Aids and Walgreens and stuff like that. And Here's the Chris Benoit I talked about that was kind of hard to get. Just, you know, it's playing that waiting game. Don't be too anxious. Just put it in your save searches. You'll come across it. Got it for like $12. No big deal. But I finally got this, you know, bare bones Benoit off the list. So, like we say, we're getting closer and closer to that complete Jack's Ruthless Discretion collection. Here's another one. You know, I say I don't play the long game, but maybe I do. I don't know. General uh, Leia Organa. Uh, this is uh, from a later uh, Princess Leia, of course. Um... Just never been a big fan of this figure. Uh, like I said, Star Wars isn't a must-have where I'm a completist with wrestling, Turtles, uh, cartoon series, Marvel Legends for the most part. Star Wars, I'm about as close to being a completist as I'm, but I'm not, I guess you would say. So I play the long games on a lot of these, and I played it on this one. I got this for $5 off Mercari. So I'm glad I didn't spend $20 on it, but for 5 bucks, hey, I'm a buyer. That's what I did. Played the long game. Here's another one we talk about every once in a while. It's kind of my sleeper set. I don't talk a ton about, but uh, TNA Impact. You know, a lot of sleeper Jacks figures here at the end. Uh, Mr. Anderson, they have their faults, uh, that's for sure. But I have almost a complete set of these. I'm just missing a handful. It's not one I'm actively searching for. Like the Hernandez is one I need. I don't have any of the Hernandez figures. I think I'm missing um, one of the Velvet Skies. Just a handful I'm missing. Um, and then, of course, some Jeff Hardys. They made a, a million Jeff Hardys in that line. But I uh, got the Mr. Anderson dirt cheap. Said, yep, I'll pick it up. Why not? Get it off the list. But uh, Jack's Deluxe Aggression and then the Deluxe Impact figures, I am going to have a complete collection of those one day. I'm just knocking on that door. It's getting closer and closer. Just playing the long game as they come. And here is another one. Another battle pack. I was kind of shocked to see this. I got this right after I filmed uh, my fig hunting video last week, so it just missed the cut, but I was surprised to see this hit uh, the area so soon. Velveteen Dream and Ricochet. Really have no use for the Ricochet. I'll let my kids play with that one, throw that in their pile. Velveteen Dream goes in my um, how I justify my basics. Uh, it's uh, a little bit different. It's something that's not an elite. Ricochet is pretty plain. For Ricochet, I guess, in this figure. We got a new top picks coming out with him anyways that I'll be getting. But this Velveteen Dream, something different. The Boa, you guys might remember that Boa from the Hulk Hogan Elite figure. Very good reuse there. So I'm glad I picked this one up. And I was very excited to see it. It's always fun when you find something that you're really not expecting. And you see it a couple weeks early in your area. You know, the Midwest is weird. Especially as a kid, the West Coast used to get everything months ahead of time. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about in the 80s, you, 80s, even up to the mid-90s, I would say. A lot of the starting lineup stuff, they would always hit uh, California and kind of work their way over or hit the East Coast and work their way to the Midwest. Well, I think times have changed a little bit. And, you know, Walmart based out of Arkansas, Target based out of Minneapolis, I think it helps a lot being in the Midwest now. 
especially where I am in Iowa, you're in between uh, the areas. There's a lot of distribution centers and stuff around, and, and you know I think it pays off, and I do uh, come across quite a few things. So uh, there's that. Now we get into the Lucy portion. We'll do Lucy's. Usually I end with the Lucy's. We're going to do Lucy's, and then I'm going to show the absolute fire and the great pickup I got this week. So let's start with some loose ones. Umaga. We showed that Jeff Hardy one. I got a few more Umagas to get. This is one that drives me nuts because in the package, for the most part, they all look identical. Um, the Samoa on the chest or no Samoa on the chest is really the only difference, as you can tell. You really have to see the package in person to look. So you got the red Umaga lettering. You got the design there. You, there's silver. I think there's a blue one, uh, a black one, a white one, a red one. But they're very tough to see in the package. So you almost got to buy Lucy's unless you're buying in person. Um, so this is one that kind of drives me nuts. Umaga and The Undertaker are two... I'm going to start turning my attention to more. I, I've got a bunch of them already, but uh, they're very hard to distinguish the little differences. And so it is what it is with Jax. Speaking of guys that got a million, we talk about it all the time. Ray Mysterio. How many rays does a man need? So when I get this all displayed, I still got some construction, some working, and some moving. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this, uh, my figure life, I guess you would say. Uh, obviously, I have a family. I got a more than a full time job. I'm very, very busy. But I got a lot of work to do in my figure room. Um, I will have a new figure video, uh, probably first of the year. Should be totally different than the last one. All the new stuff I got, the rearranging I've been doing. Um, it should be totally fresh content, almost fresh eyes for you. But obviously the classic superstars room, I can't mess with that. But uh, a lot to come. There will be a lot of changes in that next video. Um, Triple H. So this is one. Uh, finally came across. You know, he's a hard to get one. I got it for seven bucks. This is uh, the one that came with uh, the ring. As a lot of you guys know, Jax had that ring set where a guy came with a ring. I don't need the ring. Um, I need the figure, though. And I uh, got that Triple H finally. And then I got that Triple H with what I would call this week's hot garbage of the week. Partially because I already had this Triple H. He came with uh, that other Triple H. But he's also got some loose joints and a little bit dinged, a little bit damaged. So that would be Triple H, hot garbage of the week. Uh, moving on. Next up, Chris Benoit, another one that's kind of hard to find. You don't see a lot of Chris Benoit's. I still say, you know, when, when he did his thing and murdered uh, his family, I think a lot of people threw their Benoit's away. They destroyed them, whatever. There's also been a lot of people that popped the Benoit heads off and put them on elites, made customs. So I find it very hard to find a lot of the Benoit's. Um, I still have a few more to go. Um, working on the collection, you know, got to have them all. Um, John Cena, very similar to Rey Mysterio. There's a lot of John Cena's, and here's another one. Um, the bad thing about John Cena's, and I'm sure you guys out there, tell me if I'm wrong, his feet, you know, he's got shoes instead of boots. These ankles just do not work very good on a lot of figures. Um, I don't know if I need to put a dab of super glue in there, kind of to tighten it a little bit. Usually there's that trick where you put super glue in the foot and you work it until it dries. It kind of just, it'll still bend on you, but it puts a little bit more pressure to hold it together, kind of. Um, but John Cena drives me nuts with these because they seem to always fall over. And I, I can just see the game of dominoes, John Cena on my shelf, knocking everybody over. And speaking of John Cena, this gets more John Cena discussion. Uh, this is the one. Here, look at this. I'm talking about the ankles. You set them up. He just falls forward. I, I got to figure out a fix to that because I cannot have that on my shelf. There's not a lot to do it. Most Cena figures do. It's just the way they were made. Now, why did I buy this Cena figure? You can see it right there. You can see on his thigh, best of 2009. Best of 2009 John Cena. So this is total, um, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, basically, it should be hot garbage of the week. This is total cheap out by Jax. You know, they did the best of collection. We've discussed it before, I think. If not, well, I'm going to do it again. I am not counting the best of collections as part of having a complete Jax Ruthless Regression line. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, so the only difference of these figures is this little stamp that they put on the thigh. There is no other difference. Um, the other problem with that is they were made in small quantities because why does why would you want that same figure twice? Uh, uh, just a regular Batista with a why would you want as a kid to play with one that has a stamp on its leg? It just seems weird. Um, so those weren't made in big quantities. They were released at the end of the year. They did them for some of the pay-per-view set, like best of WrestleMania, best of whatever. And like I said, the only difference is that stamp on the leg. Well, my biggest gripe is nobody bought those. They were released in small quantities, and nobody cares about them. They're basically worthless. 
so you it's very hard to find you don't see them pop up on ebay every once in a while you see them in a lot or whatever no big deal but even if i wanted to i would never be able to track all these figures down there is so many i mean they did what eight nine years of best of sets uh best of deluxe aggression best of ruthless aggression best of pay-per-view i can't find them there's no way you search on ebay you'll find here one two three here and there but I'm not going to pay $200 for a Ric Flair best of that the only thing's difference is in his leg. It just doesn't make sense. You know, cut me some slack. I'm cutting myself some slack. I'm usually one that says I have to have that, but there's no way that counts. Maybe I'll play the long game once I get everything finished off. Maybe as I see them pop up for $3 online because nobody wants them, maybe I'll piece them in. Um, so we'll see. But that's kind of that justification there. But I should say, so the reason I got this one, Kyle, why'd you buy this one? Well, they cheaped out at the very end of the line. They did this with the Randy Orton one I showed a couple weeks ago, Cena no different. They took the design off the shirt and just made him a red shirt figure. That is totally different than the other one with the design in his shirt. So to me, that counts because it's a totally different figure with no design. Um, so that works to me, but you're probably saying, Kyle, well, it's totally different with the stamp. Yeah, it is, but this is different. This means more. If he's standing in a group of them, you can't even see that stamp. So it would say, why do you have the same figure there twice? But this one's different with no design on the shirt. So that's just a little bit of an insight into my madness of collecting. Um, here's one that I uh, forgot all about is a later series Gold Dust. Gold Dust, Jax did Gold Dust the best. I, I love the Mattel Gold Dust that were done, but I'd still swear by the Jax ones, especially that classic Superstars Jax. That is the best Gold Dust figure ever released. Uh, you're not going to change my mind, so don't even try. Uh, here's another one that's a little harder to find. You don't see come uh, around too often. Teddy Long. Uh, I believe this is the Treacherous Trio. Three-pack Teddy Long. Um, you do see a lot of Teddy Longs. The pink uh, jacket one, that one's pretty common. You see around with the glasses. This one, uh, much harder to find. Uh, played the long game and finally found one at a decent price, so I was happy about that. Uh Saw a deal this week, and I had to pass her a week ago. I finally got it in the mail. Um, one of my favorite sets ever, the Kmart exclusive Extreme Superstars. Fits in with the classic Superstars set. Uh, there was a guy selling this online in one of the Facebook groups. Uh, he had the package. It was totally destroyed, so it was going to be a Lucy. That's what I needed. I want to get these loose, but I wanted them mint. That's where I snuck in and said, hey, throw the packaging away. Ship them to me loose. Um, I'll take this. So this was a Kmart exclusive, and this was very hard to find, at least in Iowa Kmarts. I remember getting very lucky. I drove up to Ames. We talked about Ames last week where I found Elite 76. They had a Kmart in Ames back in the day. I went up there. They had a whole shelf full of those things. I, I got two of them at the time, sold one, luckily kept my mint on card one. Um, but that's a favorite set of mine. I had to get that loose as I absolutely love Terry Funk. Probably one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Not probably, is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Uh, 89 I Quit match uh, with Ric Flair, you know, sealed the deal for little Kyle. Um, RVD, another RVD figure I needed. I believe I'm only missing two RVDs. One of them is the one in the ring shirt. I think he's got like jeans and maybe an ECW shirt. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. But I'm missing uh, just a couple of RVDs, so I'm almost done with RVD. Uh, that'll be a good one. Um, here's another one, Rey Mysterio. We talk about him all the time. I need to check my checklist this weekend and see how many Rey Mysterios I'm still missing. I want to say three or four. I bet you I got 30 plus at this point. There is so many Rey Mysterios. We talk about it all the time, but and they made it for a reason. He sold. And then uh, our final Lucy of the week. Move out. Make sure we don't got anything else. Uh, one of the hardest to find Jack's figures, and I finally came across it this week. Uh, Jeff Hardy. Adrenaline Series 1 from the 2-pack of Tommy Dreamer. Uh, a very hard-to-find figure. Uh, finally got that cross off the list. So very, very happy about that. And, well, it's amateur hour, I guess. I had to do a little cutscene here as I forgot one important purchase this week. And as some of you guys may have guessed, as uh, Ringside's been shipping stuff, here you go. Elite 77 has come through my doors, finally. Right on the heels of 76, a couple days later. Rick Rude, The Fiend, of course, uh, one of the most sought-after figures in a long time. Uh, Ronda Rousey, who else we got? Late 77, Viscera, probably my favorite in the line. And then, of course, Miss Elizabeth makes her return in the Elite line. And then finally, AJ Styles. So, I did get Elite 77 this week, still got to get the Rick Rude Chase. 
You know, I've seen a lot of things on the Rick Rude staining uh, the figure, which is really sad. I will have an unboxing video of these uh, coming probably this week sometime. Um, I did order these all in cases. Um, or they, I should say they came in cases. I'm using uh, these for my uh, flashback set with Harley Race and a few other figures just to have. So they were all sent inside the cases, which was kind of cool. Uh, but that's it. Uh, here it all is, Elite 77, through my door. All right, here it is. This is what I've been promising. I finally pulled the trigger. You know, the mailman lost this stuff. I finally got it back. Took some work. Very happy to have this in my collection. And I guess without any further ado, a figure that I really wanted for a long time, never pulled the trigger on, but I said to myself, Kyle, your birthday's next week, or two weeks, whatever it was. Um, I, I'll be uh, 40 years old on June 25th. I can't believe it. 40 years old. And I said, Kyle, it's time to treat yourself. You owe it to yourself to get your most wanted figure. What is the most... What is the number one figure you've said you'd probably never get that you wanted, that you've looked at forever? Well, I pulled the trigger. And I said, it's time. I'm doing it. We talked about that Hogan Michaels two-pack. I did some major bundling work, a lot of back and forth. And out of that came a grail item for me and maybe some of you. Jack's Classic Superstars Toy Fair exclusive 1 of 100 Terry Funk. My all-time favorite wrestler, him and the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, my love of Terry Funk started back in 1989. The Ric Flair, Terry Funk, I quit match. I'll uh, set the stage here. I went with my family. We were having pizza at a pizza restaurant uh, about two miles from my house. And I'm just looking at the clock. Looking at the clock. Because the Clash of the City Champions started at 7.05. And as a kid, you're thinking, well, that Ric Flair, Terry Funk, it might start the show. Knowing, hey, it's going to close that show. you got plenty of time to eat pizza. But I was antsy as antsy could be. I'm looking at the clock. I know how far away it is. I need to be home by 7.05. I am just a, a pro wrestling maniac at 9 years old. I cannot miss this match. I can't miss 2 seconds of this match. Um, so I just said, Dad, I know you understand. i got to go. And that is what I did. I sprinted home. I left. My dad let me go. That's fine, whatever. I ran the two miles or so home. I sprinted that whole way home to get in home in time to watch the Clash of the Champions. Little did I know is that match started at like 8.30 at night. But whatever. It was totally worth it. I'll never forget that date. I was so excited. And that's what sealed Terry Funk for me. Uh, obviously, he went on to ECW, Death Matches, uh, Chainsaw Charlie. I went back and saw his earlier All Japan career as a late teen. Just absolutely loved Terry Funk. I got to hang out with Terry Funk many a times, met him on multiple locations, actually got to work with him for a full weekend uh, back in the day and, you know, picked his brain. We talked about a lot of stuff. So Terry Funk holds a special place in my heart and I knew I needed this figure. You know, these one of 100s I've never owned. It's a question I get a lot is, Kyle, why don't you have these one of 100 Jacks Classics? You got everything else. I don't know if I have a great answer besides I just don't really want to spend that much money on one figure. It's got to mean a heck of a lot to me. Like there's a Sonny, a Rey Mysterio. They're pricey figures. You're looking at four, five, six hundred bucks sometimes, even more. And I just can't justify spending that kind of money on a Sonny figure I don't really care about. Terry Funk, however, I can justify that. I love Terry Funk. I should have bought this long ago when it was much cheaper. Um, I've always loved this figure, the blood on it. I mean, just totally awesome. You didn't see that. Outside of those junky uh, original San Francisco toy maker figures that came with blood splatter on them that are absolute garbage. But this one of 100 Terry Funk with the shirt um, and the blood on the face, the taped fist, barbed wire bat, just absolutely awesome. Toy Fair exclusive, one of 100. Um, so excited to have this in my collection. Not sure where I'm going to display it yet, but this is one. Like I said, my 40th birthday is right around the corner, uh, June 25th. I'm sure we'll have some great surprises. Uh, you know, my dad always comes through with great presents, so I'm sure I'll have something cool for my 40th that'll be in a future weekly purchases, uh, weekly gifts, maybe we'll call it that week. But had to get this Terry Funk as a treat to myself. I deserve it. One of my grail pieces. Never thought I would own it. But, you know... Sometimes when you're bundling, people, you know, the negotiations are tough. They go back and forth. And I couldn't just get the Terry Funk. Uh, the guy wouldn't sell me Terry Funk by himself. I had to bundle it with something else. Like I said, I got the Michaels and Hogan free. 
purchasing this bundle, but there was one other figure that had to come in the bundle. Didn't really want this figure a ton. However, if you listed the figures in this set, I would say this is probably outside of the funk, the one I wanted. So what did I got? I got one one of 100. What's better? Two one of 100s, and that is Roddy Piper, the boxing edition one. So I guess outside of the Warrior, these would be my two top favorite. You know, Warrior would fit really great right here right now. And unfortunately, no surprise, Warrior is going to pop out. But uh, the Warrior, the Funk, and the Piper are probably the coolest one of 100s to me. Uh, the ones that I would want the most. Um, the seller would not sell the Funk without the Piper. And I finally gave in. Like I said, I ended up, in my mind, justifying it. I got the Michaels Hogan for free. So now I got the one of 100 Roddy Piper. Uh, with the boxing gloves, a little bit oversized, a little cartoony, I would say. But the cool robe, um, you know, this Toy Fair uh, Wizard World. Uh, you remember the Piper with, a, with the uh, Panther shirt was the one of 3,000 that was released around this time. Uh, but there it is. A very cool figure in itself. I did love Roddy Piper a lot as a kid. Um, my favorite Piper area, which isn't a lot of people's, is uh, Intercontinental Champion Roddy Piper facing the Mountie and Bret Hart. That time period was I was at my all-time favorite of Roddy Piper. Um, I didn't get to see a lot of his early heel work as I started getting into wrestling at WrestleMania three, right for the build up there. I was a little too young to understand WrestleMania one, uh, but I went back and seen a lot of Piper stuff, uh, just like I did Terry Funk as well. And uh, very happy to have both of these in my collection, that is for sure. And I would say. Hopefully you guys agree. Leave me a comment uh, if you think this is worth the anticipation. I don't know. Some of you guys might not be a fan of these, but um, pretty big uh, weekly purchases. Uh, if you guys know what these are, are worth out there in the wild, especially these days, um, a very big uh, weekly purchase, that's for sure. So hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing these um, as uh, the weekly purchases. Oh, I also got what came with the Terry Funk. Look at this. Jeremy Padauer, I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'll take a picture of it and, you know, follow me on social media. You'll see the picture of all these items. I post my weekly purchases, but uh, basically it says, this letter confirms that the one of 100 Terry Funk figure is authentic and from Jeremy Padauer's personal collection. Please include the certificate of authenticity as part of the purchase. So this is traveled uh, with the people that have bought this Terry Funk figure. Signed, Jeremy Padauer, Director, Entertainment and Marketing, Jack's Pacific. Uh, I've told you guys before, I love Jeremy Padauer. I love what he brings to the, to the figure game, the excitement. His, he's a follow you need to follow on Twitter. We wouldn't have the classic superstars without him. So uh, my favorite line of all time. So Jeremy Padauer is a big deal to me. A lot of people could care less about having this autograph. I just find it really cool. I will display this somewhere. Jeremy, hopefully you're watching the video. Sending out a virtual hug and a high five to you. Um, you know, hire me for a uh, jazz wares. I think I'd fit in real good. I got experience. I could help you. I think so. Uh, but very happy to have this whole package together. And this just sets it off and makes it even cooler to have Jeremy's autograph and a personal handwritten letter, uh, to go along with the Terry Funk figure. So there it is. Hopefully weekly purchases didn't disappoint you. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you picked up this week. Any of your thoughts on this kind of stuff. Um, anything you guys want to talk about, leave it in the comments. Don't forget to like the video as always. Uh, this is the, my favorite video of the week. It's always fun to do these weekly purchases. Uh, and I always say like every other YouTuber, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We've been making good growth every single week, but I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that watch this that don't subscribe, but let's see how many people really, uh, enjoy the channel. Leave me some comments, some feedback, whatever you want, but don't forget to subscribe. And that's it for another weekly purchases. We'll be back next Saturday with all kinds of good stuff, I am sure. We'll see how it goes. Um, until then, I'll see you guys all real soon.